Welcome to our lecture online. In this set of videos, we're going to learn how to integrate trigonometric functions. Here, we're going to start with the sine and the cosine. What is the integral of the cosine of x, and what is the integral of the sine of x? Since integration is the reverse of differentiation, let's first go back to something we're familiar with. What is the derivative with respect to x of the sine of x, and what is the derivative of cosine of x with respect to x? Well, the derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x, and the derivative of the cosine of x is equal to the negative sine of x. That means if we then do the integration, we can go backwards, which means if we integrate the cosine of x, we should get back the sine of x, and if we integrate the sine of x, we should get, get back the inverse or the negative of the cosine of x. I shouldn't say inverse, but the negative of the cosine of x. Let's see why that works. If you come over here, you see that we have a cosine curve and we have a sine curve. And the derivative of a cosine curve, they claim here, that is the negative of the sine curve. Let's see if that works. Here, if we take the derivative of the cosine, we should get zero because the derivative of a function is equal to the slope of the function and the slope of the cosine right there, right there is zero and that's indeed what we get. The sine of x is zero, so that seems to make sense. If we now come over here, here we can see that the derivative of the cosine of x should give us a negative quantity. It's a negative slope. But the sine is positive. Also, we can see that that's where the slope is the, the, the steepest, which means that's where the, the sine function should be the largest. And it is. It's the very peak right here. It's the maximum value for the sine of x at this particular location. If we work on the unit circle, we can say that the sine of x will be equal to 1 there. That means the slope here will be a negative 1. But you can see that if we take the derivative of the, of the cosine of x right here, we get the negative sine of x, which makes sense because it's a negative slope. Since sine of x is positive here, take the negative of that, we get negative 1, which indicates what the slope is. If we come down here, does the cosine of x. If we take the derivative of the cosine of x over here, we should get 0, and that is indeed the case again there. If we look at this point right here, if we take the derivative of the cosine of x at this point, we should get plus 1, but the sine of x is minus 1 here. But if you put a negative in front of it, we get plus 1 again that matches. So you can see that the cosine and the sine of x are the derivatives of each other, or the negative of the derivative of the other. If we then take the integral, we simply then go backwards. If the derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x, the integral of the cosine of x therefore must equal the sine of x. We should also add a constant of integration because when we take the derivative, if for example we had the derivative of the sine of x plus 5, then the 5 would drop off and we have no visibility that there was actually a constant there. So whenever we integrate, we must always indicate that there might have been some constant that was there when we took the derivative that we have no knowledge of, so we just go ahead and put in that constant. For the sine of x, notice that if we take the derivative of the cosine of x, we get the negative sine. Therefore, if we integrate the sine, we should get the negative cosine back. So the minus the cosine of x, and again, plus a constant of integration, because if we took the derivative of a constant, it goes to zero, and we have no knowledge of it. So that's how we do the integrals of both the cosine and the sine, and that's a good start for learning how to integrate trigonometric functions. On the next video, we'll go ahead and show you how we actually know that this is true by expanding the sine and the cosine into an infinite series, take the derivative, and then take the integral back and see that that relationship is there. So stay tuned if you want to know more about how to integrate trigonometric functions.